Welcome back to all for C learning session 36. In this session, we are going to learn chloroform preparation methods of preparation. Let us see. In case of halogen compounds, monohalo compounds, ethyl chloride methods of preparation properties we discuss. Dihalo alkanes, methylene chloride methods of preparation, ethylene chloride, one geminal and abyssinal methods of preparation properties. We will discuss in previous session. Now this one is a trihalogen derivative, chloroform. CHCl3 is called chloroform. CHBr3 is called bromoform. And CHI3 is called iodoform. Chloroform, bromoform, iodoform. Simply, those compounds which are having CHX3 formula are called haloform. And those substrates or those reactants which can give CHX3 products, that reaction, what we call the haloform reaction. So, which type of compounds can give haloform reaction and which compounds cannot give haloform reaction, we will discuss in the last set, in ending of this lesson. Now, let us see methods of preparation. From ethyl alcohol, ethyl alcohol upon reaction with bleaching powder, ethyl alcohol upon reaction with bleaching powder, we are getting CHCl3 plus HCO taken to ICA means the calcium formate. As we know that bleaching powder, this bleaching powder upon hydrolysis it liberates chlorine. That chlorine what we call available chlorine. Repeating bleaching powder upon hydrolysis or by the action of dilute acids. It liberates chlorine. What extent of bleaching powder, what extent of chlorine can give? What extent of chlorine it can give? Based upon that, quality of bleaching powder depends. So, the chlorine liberated here, what we call available chlorine. Available chlorine. If a bleaching powder, available chlorine is 35 to 38 percent. Such a case, bleaching powder, we can say good sample of bleaching powder. I am repeating, if a bleaching powder liberates 35 to 38 percent available chlorine. Theoretically, it has 57 percent of chlorine. Theoretically, 57 percent of chlorine that we can calculate by considering molecular weight, calcium 40, oxygen 16 and 2 chlorines 71. Out of this total weight, what is the chlorine weight? If you consider that, you are getting 57 percent. Of that 57 percent, if it liberates 35 to 38 percent chlorine, that sample is called a good sample of bleaching powder. So, obviously here, bleaching powder upon hydrolysis, it liberates chlorine. And that chlorine, that chlorine is participated in the reaction here. That chlorine functions as both oxidizing agent and chlorinating agent. I am repeating once again. Chlorine, whatever liberated by hydrolysis of bleaching powder, that one functions as both chlorinating agent and also oxidizing agent. See here, chlorinating agent and oxidizing agent, how it can behave? By dissolving the Cl in water, it liberates a nascent oxygen. Means we are getting product HCl and HOCl. HOCl can liberate nascent oxygen. That means, in this reaction, chlorine acts as oxidizing agent. So, being it is alcohol, ethyl alcohol, which is a primary alcohol, this primary alcohol upon oxidation, this primary alcohol upon oxidation, we are getting aldehyde. CH3, CH2OH, upon oxidation, we are getting CH3, CHO plus H2O. That means, instead of writing these two reactions, we can write simply CH3, CH2OH, 
प्लस नेशन ऑप्शन गेटिंग कैंसिल सीएल टू मेंस इथाइल अल्कोहल अपॉन रिएक्शन विद क्लोरीन वी कैन राइट डायरेक्टली हियर CH3CHO एंड HCl सो फर्स्ट के फर्स्ट स्टेप हियर क्लोरीन एक्ट्स एज ओनली ऑक्सीडाइजिंग एजेंट मींस by oxidizing with the alcohol which is a primary alcohol primary alcohol upon oxidation we are getting aldehydes aldehydes upon further oxidation will get acids carboxylic acids secondary alcohol upon oxidation we are getting ketones okay ketones difficult to oxidize and which upon further oxidation again we are getting carboxylic acids with less number of carbon atoms here primary alcohol upon oxidation This primary alcohol, ethyl alcohol, consists two carbon atoms. Here you are getting two carbon containing aldehyde. So during this oxidation, during this oxidation, chlorine acts as oxidizing agent. Chlorine acts as oxidizing agent, and and ethyl alcohol oxidizes to aldehyde with the same number of carbon atoms. There is no change in the number of carbon atoms, right? Now, formed acetaldehyde or ethanol. Formed acetaldehyde or ethanol upon reaction with chlorine. Upon reaction with chlorine. Here, with respect to this C double bond O, C double bond O carbonyl carbon, alpha carbon. This one is alpha carbon. Alpha carbon containing hydrogens are acidic. That means that hydrogens are easily replaceable. So, which upon reaction with chlorine. Here are three hydrogens are there. So first chlorine in presence of base calcium hydroxide. Here already there calcium hydroxide. As I mentioned that C double bond O group electron with ion group. With respect to electron with ion group alpha carbon means adjacent carbon what they call alpha carbon. That alpha carbon containing hydrogens are acidic hydrogens. So that acidic hydrogens absorbed by base and that hydrogens will be replaced by chlorine. Replaced by chlorine. So first we are getting chloroacetaldehyde, alpha chloroacetaldehyde. Another time, one more time, dichloroacetaldehyde. One more time, trichloroacetaldehyde. So one more mole here OH minus and Cl2, CH Cl2, C double bond OH. This one upon further reaction with Cl2 and OH minus C Cl3 C double bond OH. This what we call trichloroacetaldehyde, also called chloral. Trichloroacetaldehyde, also called chloral. So first step, chlorine acts as oxidizing agent. In second step, chlorine acts as chlorinating agent. So chlorinating agent. In chlorinating, when chlorine acts as chlorinating agent, what happens? Alpha hydrogen gets replaced. How many alpha hydrogens replaced? All the three alpha hydrogens replaced. Okay. Now, means in this reaction, chlorine has two functions. As we mentioned earlier, one is oxidizing agent. Second one is chlorinating agent. It's all completed. Now, now my question here: From if we cancel one mole ethyl alcohol, in order to oxidize it, one mole ethyl alcohol, we need one mole chlorine, right? So one mole ethyl alcohol requires one mole chlorine for what oxidation? We are getting one mole aldehyde, right? So for one mole aldehyde, in order to convert, in order to convert into chloral, how many moles of chlorine we need to provide? Here first CH3 C double bond OH upon reaction with Cl2, monochlorination, dichlorination, trichlorination. How many times? Three times. That means as oxidizing agent one mole chlorine utilized. And as chlorinating agent, three mole chlorine is utilized. As oxidizing agent, one mole. As chlorinating agent, three mole. So in order to convert one mole ethyl alcohol into one mole ethyl alcohol into chloral, how many moles of chlorine required here? Four moles. Out of four moles, one mole acts as oxidizing agent. Three moles acts as chlorinating agent. Now, while when we are using bleaching powder here. From one mole bleaching powder, how many moles of chlorine we are getting? One mole. So for this function, we need four moles. That means how many how many moles of bleaching powder we required here? Four moles. Okay. You will get questions based on this. Now, after formation of chloral, CCl3 C double bond OH, next what reaction performs? Here, 
In presence of base calcium hydroxide is there. This OH minus prefers to attack here, attack here, and that means it acts as a nucleophile. CCl3, CO minus HOH. Upon the reversal of the negative charge, this CCl3 minus comes out. Then what remains here? H C double bond O O H plus C C L three minus. This C C L three minus is a conjugate base of C H C L three. Basically, C H C L three is a weak acid. Weak acid conjugate is a strong base. Weak acid conjugate is a strong base. Now this is a strong base, and the formic acid is the acid. Then what happened here? It abstract proton from here. And leaves HCO minus and CHCl3. This one is a chloroform. So here, in order to prepare one more chloroform, we need one more chloral. In order to prepare one more chloral, we need three moles of chlorine and one mole acetaldehyde. In order to prepare one mole acetaldehyde, we need one mole chlorine and one mole ethyl alcohol. That means, in order to prepare one mole chlorine, one mole chlorine from from where? From ethyl alcohol. From one mole ethyl alcohol. From one mole ethyl alcohol. In order to get one mole chlorine, one mole chlorine. How many moles of chlorine required? Four moles, of which one mole acts as oxidizing and three moles acts as a chlorinating agent. Here, generally this reaction because of we are using calcium salts. You you can write like this: two C C L three C double bond O H. Upon reaction with the calcium hydroxide, calcium hydroxide, you are adding 2CHCl3 plus HCOO taken twice CA. HCOO taken twice CA means calcium formate. You are getting a calcium formate here. Now, once again, while oxidizing ethyl alcohol into acetaldehyde, is there any change in number of carbon atoms? No. Number of carbon atoms remains because in ethyl alcohol two carbons are there and in acetaldehyde also two carbons are there. Clear? Now, in order to convert the acetaldehyde into chloral, is there any change in number of carbon atoms? No. In acetaldehyde two carbon atoms are there. In chloral trichloroacetaldehyde also two carbon atoms only there. That means there is no change in number of carbon atoms. But when chloral convert into chloroform, if you observe here, how many carbon atoms are there in chloral two? But in chloroform, how many carbons are there? One. And uh, remaining number of carbon atoms, only one carbon is going to convert into chloroform. Remaining whatever the number of carbon atoms are there, that carbon atoms are going to carbon atom containing compound is nothing but carboxylic acid salt. Calcium salt of carboxylic acid. So what I need to say here, whatever the number of carbon atoms are there in the substrate corresponding to that one carbon less in the calcium salt of carboxylic acid. Earlier we can say two carbon containing aldehyde, two carbon containing aldehyde, two carbon containing alcohol. But we are adding calcium salt, one carbon containing calcium salt. Hope you got the point here. Now the same method when we are using when we are using acetaldehyde as a starting material. Acetaldehyde only starting material, but not ethyl alcohol. In such a case, only three moles of chlorine is sufficient because we have no need to oxidize further. And this one. This one, acetaldehyde, upon reaction with chlorine in presence of base, it behaves as means it replaces the three chlorine atoms, three chlorine, three hydrogen atoms with three chlorine atoms. You are getting trichloroacetaldehyde. So when you are considering acetaldehyde as a starting material, then obviously you are getting you are getting chloroform by consuming three moles of chlorine. Whereas if ethyl alcohol is starting material, obviously it needs four moles of chlorine, of which one mole chlorine acts as oxidizing and three mole chlorine acts as chlorinating. So with acetaldehyde only chlorinating, no oxidizing, right? Now you have to think once here how the things are going on here. For first case, you mentioned that acetaldehyde, and with respect to this C double bond, oh, this is alpha carbon, alpha carbon containing hydrogens are acidic hydrogens, fine. But when we are using base, in presence of base, that hydrogen atoms are replaced fine. Now, whenever we are OH minus, you mentioned that this OH minus attacks upon carbonyl carbon. I am saying that means earlier you mentioned base, right now you mentioned that a nucleophile. So why it acts as base and why it acts as nucleophile? So here 
because of there is no acidic hydrogen because of there is no acidic hydrogen all the acidic hydrogens are replaced now right now oh minus attacks upon carbonyl carbon because it has preferably acts as only nucleophile there is no acidic hydrogen right and ccl3 also good leaving group ccl3 also good leaving group whenever this one pulls electron towards itself obviously the positive charge appear upon this carbon will be more, more. Because of the CCA3 is strong minus I group and these are pi electrons also loosely bound pi electrons also shifts towards more alternative oxygen atom. Because of this one it requires positive charge. In addition to that CCA3 also pulls the electron towards itself. It is strong electron pulling group. Hence the positive charge appear upon this carbon carbon will be very high. Hence OH minus prefers to attack upon that. And after attacking of that and reversal of the negative charge from oxygen. CCL3 has to depart as CCL3 minus. As we learned that CCL3 minus is more stable. CCL3 minus is more stable because of resonance. Because of resonance, here this will be of electron negative charge. Electron will be participate in pi bond formation with vacant to d orbital of chlorine. Vacant to d orbital of chlorine. That means CCL3 minus can be stabilized. Hence it comes out. It comes out as the living group and CCL3 minus comes out once it comes out it abstract proton from acid because of it is basically acid it has a tendency to donate proton and it requires proton that's why CCL3 minus abstract proton from here and formic acid salt but you are not supposed to get any formic acid we are getting formic acid salt and this one is chloroform if you are using bromine in this reaction then the product what we are getting is a bromoform. If you are using iodine here, you are getting iodoform. So, not only required this bleaching powder, instead of bleaching powder, we can also use chlorine and NaOH for chloroform reaction. Similarly, bromine and NaOH or KOH also we can use base, any base, strong base they require. And iodine and NaOH or KOH or Na2CO3, even Na2CO3 also based because of carburetor and reverse hydrolysis, we are getting OH minus, right? So either of these means NaOH or KOH or Na2CO3, either of these we can use for this haloform reaction. So now let us consider, means we consider that a primary alcohol, right? Primary alcohol family. In primary alcohol family, only ethyl alcohol gives this reaction. Only ethyl alcohol gives. Sir, so what happens if I am going to consider propyl alcohol? So, how can you say that a propyl alcohol is not going to perform this reaction? Can we prepare? Can we prepare chloroform from, from propyl alcohol? Check out your answer. Why and why not? So, if we can prepare, then how? If we cannot prepare, then why not? So check out yourself. Let us consider secondary alcohol. Secondary alcohol, I am going to consider isopropyl alcohol. Isopropyl alcohol here. So any secondary alcohol, condition here to, to give have a form reaction is any secondary alcohol but one must be methyl. One must be methyl. Other alkyl group, whatever it may be, it's not a matter. Any other alkyl group, it's not criteria, but one alkyl group must be methyl. While I'm that, we'll see a little later. Now, this isopropyl alcohol upon reaction with, upon reaction with chlorine in presence of Na2CO3, say, then we are getting product CHCl3 chloroform, CHCl3 chloroform, in addition to that, CH3COONA. Now check out what we learned in previous example. Here three carbon atoms are there, alcohol consists. Now one carbon converts into chloroform, right? And remaining how many carbon atoms are there? Two carbons. That two carbon containing carboxylic acids are you already. Right? Now let us see the mechanism how it proceeds. In presence of base and Cl, Cl2, we are getting Nascent oxygen CHOH isopropyl alcohol, which is secondary alcohol. This secondary alcohol upon oxidation. From where you are getting oxidation? This by dissolving the Cl2 in water. So here one whole Cl2 we are using. This Cl2 acts as oxidizing agent again. 
and it oxidizes secondary alcohol into ketone as we learned that primary alcohol upon oxidation we are getting aldehyde with same number of carbon atoms secondary alcohol upon oxidation we are getting ketones with the same number of carbon atoms there is no change in the number of carbon atoms but remember if ketones further oxidize then they gives carboxylic acids with less number of carbon atoms whereas when aldehydes further oxidize they gives carboxylic acid with same number of carbon atoms so in case of aldehydes so in case of primary alcohols primary alcohols to aldehydes aldehydes to carboxylic acids no change in the number of carbon atoms if you cancel secondary alcohol secondary alcohol into ketone no change in number of carbon atoms when ketone oxidizes to carboxylic acid there will be decrease in number of carbon atoms got it so here secondary alcohol upon oxidation since secondary alcohol consists three carbon atoms and upon oxidation we are getting ketone that ketone also consists three carbon atoms there is no change in the number of carbon atoms now with respect to this c double bond over this carbon is alpha and this carbon is alpha both carbons are alpha means it consists two alpha carbons each alpha carbon possesses three hydrogens that means three alpha hydrogens are there now here chlorine acts as oxidizing agent completed and next ch3 c double bond o ch3 upon reaction with three moles of chlorine here again three moles of chlorine acts as chlorinating agent chlorinating agent first mono chloro acetone dichloro acetone and trichloro acetone so we are getting c cl3 c double bond o ch3 sir why that base is, base has to come and pick up from the same carbon hydrogen why it abstract proton from the same carbon see after mono halogenation after mono halogenation this carbon containing hydrogen is only more acidic rather than this one after dihalogenation that will be much more have a look here so uh, one by one one after one if chlorine atoms are introduced there then we are getting compound that compounds are more acidic see here monochloroacetone acetone again two alpha hydrogens are there here three alpha hydrogens here two alpha hydrogens two types of alpha hydrogens are there this one upon chlorination in presence of base again hydrogen will be replaced by chlorine from this carbon only but not from here because this hydrogen is more acidic base has to come and I abstract from this carbon only that means again a base and a cl2 then what we are getting ch cl2 c double bond o ch3 again base again base oh minus and cl2 we are getting c cl3 c double bond o ch3 see here it is very simple base has to come and abstract the proton from here you are getting negative charge right after formation of negative charge it has to take cl plus so from here you are getting Cl plus and we discussed that NaOH plus Cl2 what reaction happens? NaOH plus Cl2 gives rise to NaCl and NaOCl in NaOCl Cl is plus right or not? so that carbon negatively charged carbon is going to take that Cl plus you got it? so here whatever even though two types of alpha hydrogens are there it is preferably abstract a proton, proton from this carbon only base has to abstract proton from this carbon alpha carbon only but not on this carbon why? why because here this carbon is attached to only C double bond O group in other words this carbon containing hydrogens are activated by only C double bond O group but this carbon containing hydrogens are activated by Cl along with the C double bond O C double bond O group is with the line group in addition to that here Cl also electron with nine group since two electron with nine groups are there these hydrogens are more acidic that's why one more time when you are making chlorination obviously chlorination takes place at that carbon only but you are not supposed to think that chlorination takes place at another carbon because of this carbon containing hydrogens only more acidic it's clear now like that trichloroacetone final product you are getting during chlorination of chlorination of acetone with three moles so again what we discussed earlier in case of ethyl alcohol, one mole of one mole chlorine acts as oxidizing agent, three mole chlorine acts as chlorinating agent. In case of isopropyl alcohol, also one mole chlorine acts as oxidizing agent and three mole chlorine acts as chlorinating agent. Now, after formation of this CCl3, C double bond O CH3. This one upon reaction with the base again OH minus 
Now this OH minus has it has two it can play two roles. One is it may abstract this carbon containing hydrogen by showing its basic nature. And in other words, this OH minus has to come and attack upon this carbon means it has to behave as nucleophile. Now, when OH minus shows its nucleophilic character, then what we are reading? CCl3, CO minus, here OH and CH3. As usual, upon reversal of that, here CCl3 is good leaving group because of three strong electron withdrawing chlorine atoms are there. Hence, we are getting CCl3 minus along with that CH3, C double bond, OOH. So here, here what happened? CCl3 minus, again, it is more stable. Just come and discuss that because of resonance. Because of chlorine has a vacant orbital, carbon negatively charged carbon gives its electron pair. It, it, its own pair is not involved in delocalization with the three chlorine atom D orbitals, right? That's why this one is stable. And the formed one, it is acetic acid, being it belongs to acid family, it has tendency to break proton. And the CCl3 minus has tendency to accept the proton because of it is chloroform conjugated. Chloroform is a weak acid. Since it is a weak acid, its conjugate will be strong base. Then CCl3 minus abstracts the proton and it converts into CHCl3 plus CH3 C double bond O O minus. We are writing like that. Since we are using NaOH here, then you are writing CH3 CO NA. If you are using calcium hydroxide, you are writing calcium acetate as a product. If you are using sodium hydroxide, sodium acetate product. If you are using calcium hydroxide, calcium acetate is product. Now again, once again here. So in order to convert one mole of isopropyl alcohol, or in order to prepare one mole chloroform from isopropyl alcohol, how many chlorine molecules required? 1 mole chlorine for oxidizing and 3 mole chlorine for chlorinating, right? Total 4 moles of chlorine required, you are getting CHCl3. And the same reaction you can also explain by considering only a stone. Only a stone, okay fine, acetone. In such a case, there is no chlorine here acts as oxidizing agent because directly we consider carbonyl compound. So you can prepare chloroform either from primary alcohols or in primary alcohol family only ethyl alcohol, only ethyl alcohol. As I asked you why propyl alcohol is not possible, what is the reason? Okay, in only ethyl alcohol, whereas in case of secondary alcohol family, any secondary alcohol but condition is one alkyl group must and should be methyl. The second alkyl group whatever it may be, it's not criteria here. So one alkyl group must and should be methyl. So why like that? What happened if I am going to consider 2-butanol, 2-butanol? So how the things are going on? Let us check out here. CH3, CHOH, CH2 and CH3. This one upon reaction with Br2 and K2CO3. Then what product you are going to get and which acid you are going to get. Try to write the mechanism and find out that. Similarly, in case of ketones, methyl ketones, one must be methyl. One must be methyl. Okay, fine. So methyl. Another one is I am going to use phenyl. Methyl phenyl ketone also called acetophenone. Acetophenone upon reaction with I2 and Na2CO3. What product you are getting? Again, I2, Br2, Cl2, all these are having similar function. And Na2CO3, NaOH, KOH, all are nothing but bases. So in presence of a base, what happened reaction and which carboxylic acid salt you are getting? Let us check out here. So here condition is, if it is a secondary alcohol, okay, one alkyl group must be methyl, other alkyl group may be whatever it is. And if it belongs to aldehyde family, only acetaldehyde gives this reaction. Only acetaldehyde gives reaction. Now, check out that what happened if I am going to use propanol. If I am going to use propanol, I2 and Na2CO3, what happened? What product you are getting? Are you getting iodoform or not? If not, why? If you are getting, how? Okay, next one. Next one, in case of secondary, in case of ketone family, one must be methyl, methyl ketones. That's what we call it, methyl ketones. Means one alkyl group must be methyl. Other alkyl groups again, whatever it may be. Other alkyl groups again, whatever it may be. And try to find out that if CH3, C double bond O. So you mentioned that methyl ketone, right? 
means C double bond group must and should be attached to CH3 group, right? So here methyl ketone, fine. In methyl, here this part, this part is remain same. Na? Now I am going to use OC to H for this what we call ethyl ethanoate. Now my question is ethyl ethanoate upon reaction with I2 and Na2CO3. Are you getting hydrophone or not? If you are getting, how? If you are not getting, why? So try to write out mechanism of these reactions, then you will find the answer.